Today, I want to mindfully and logically translate some phrases that men say a lot. What men say versus what they mean. And the reason I want to do this is not to even remotely start a conversation about men versus women or anything like that, but rather because in life, we tend to realize a lot of things after the fact. When faced with some of the phrases I'm going to reference here, in the moment, we hear, we should hang out soon. We hear, why are you single? We hear, I'm not looking for a relationship. And we go to this default reaction mode. We hear those things from men and we don't react with clarity. And more often than not, we find clarity afterwards. We find it in a moment of pause. We find it after firing up the group chat. So really the purpose of this is to help you find clarity in the present, to put these phrases in your back pocket so that the next time you hear them, you don't go to default reaction mode. And really what I hope this provides you with then is empathy. Empathy, not acceptance, not being strung along, but empathy to understand why someone is saying these things, why they're saying them, what is the why behind them. And by doing this, we avoid doing one of two things, which is our default mode. In general, when we react to these phrases, we react by some kind of vitriol egged on by the internet. All men are lying. Don't believe anything a man says. We go to that end or we go to the other end that says, oh, he doesn't want a relationship. I should convince him. We tend to go to one or the other, but clarity and empathy leads you to the middle, right? It helps you avoid the, the internet told me this way, so I believe it, or some kind of, I need to convince this person otherwise. So through this, I hope you find empathy for, for yourself. Really, empathy is for you. Empathy is power so that you can react to facts, not assumptions, not emotion, just facts. So I've got six statements here that I'm going to rattle off that I think are really common. I've heard men say them time and time again. I've said them, and I'm going to give like three minutes on each from my perspective, translating them, what men say versus what they mean. So the first one is when a guy says, we should hang out sometime. Translation, I want to go out with you. However, we should hang out sometime followed by nothing means I'm interested, but not that interested. So the translation is we should hang out sometime means I'm not that interested because the reality is when a guy wants something, shyness aside, hesitation aside, fear of rejection aside, for the most part, when a guy decides he wants something, he decides he doesn't want to miss out on it. And he turns on, you can call it guy mode, alpha mode, take charge mode, whatever, and when that's on, he's not going to let someone slip away because of a half-assed, vague statement like we should hang out sometime. No, he's going to want to lock you in. He's going to get competitive. Men are competitive. He doesn't want someone else swooping in. And so if he wants to make sure he gets to you, he's going to be specific. I'd love to take you out. How's Friday? How's Saturday? How's Tuesday coffee? How's any day this week where we could just chat? Never sometime. Specifics and actions. And not just because this sounds romantic and like chivalrous and whatever, but because this is man's human nature. This is instinct and honesty. When a man wants something, he's not going to want to run the risk of letting it slip away because of passiveness. So if a guy tells you we should hang out sometime, all right, whatever, but what you're looking for is on the tail end of that. And that is what will translate this for you. Nothing, no specifics, no suggestion of a date, no when are you free. Well, that means, translation, he's interested, but not that interested. However, we should hang out sometime, followed by how about Friday or Saturday or Tuesday or any day of the week that works for you because I don't want to miss out on the chance to get to know you. That's the translation you're looking for. So that's the first one. Next up is a true classic. My ex was crazy or double whammy. All of my exes were crazy. Some variation of my ex was the problem. Blame. And the internet loves to do this thing where if a man says his ex was crazy, that's because he made her crazy. And that very well could be the case, but we don't know. And it's not our job to go down that rabbit hole and dissect what happened, who's crazy, if that's even the right word or not. It's our job to hear a statement like my ex was crazy and approach it with why. Why is he saying that? And why would he want me to believe that? Why would he want me to believe that? That's the clarity we're looking for. The minute we go down the rabbit hole of story time and evidence, we lose the plot. The plot the translation here is, why does he want me to think his ex was crazy? And from my experience and what I've learned, men see their relationship from their point of view. Duh. Men see their ex from their point of view. And no matter what happened to end the relationship, the post-relationship clarity will always be from his point of view. And when that's the case, human nature says blame. 
Human nature says they're at fault. And more often than not, the real reason behind my ex was crazy is to get the power back. And not necessarily in an evil, manipulative way, but in a human way. Because no one wants to look themselves in the mirror and say they were the problem, they were crazy. No one wants to be labeled that way. So the easy solution for a man here is to give the label of crazy to their ex. Give it to the person who doesn't even have a voice in this conversation. My ex was the problem. My ex was crazy. To a man, it communicates in their minds that they were a good partner. They're a good, noble man. And they're single because of their ex, not them. So that's the translation. My ex was crazy, a.k.a. the relationship ended. And I don't want to be the loser here. So I'll gain the upper hand for myself and in the public view and keep my record clean by saying she was. Do with that what you will. See it as human nature. Understand that no one wants to be seen as the bad guy, so we adopt this winner-loser mentality. Or see it as something more nefarious. If you would say this about his ex, what would he say about me? How would he react with me? It's up to you, but I would say couple that with other behaviors you notice. But that's the translation. Next up, you deserve better than me. Very simple translation. When he says you deserve better than me, he means it, and you do. And he's saying you deserve better than me because it sounds good. It sounds noble. It sounds vague. It sounds, you know, it's the opposite of getting into the details of why he doesn't fully like you because in his head, that would be hurtful for no good reason. Nothing to overthink here. He means it. You do deserve better than him. It's noble in a sense, I suppose. He doesn't want to hurt your feelings unnecessarily when he hits you with a classic line. So you could see it that way. You could see it as, you know, you're frustrated that he's not more honest, but it's up to you. But that is what it means. It means you do deserve better, and that's all you need to know. And as much as guys are villainized a lot, most kind, aware guys, they don't want to hurt someone's feelings if they don't have to. And if it's been a couple dates and he's decided he doesn't want more, it's very easy to just be vague and avoid that. And you deserve better hits the nail on the head. It's kind of a compliment to you. It puts you on a higher level than him. It gets him off the hook without having to be specific. So that's that one. Next up, any variation of, I just got out of a relationship, any variation of, I don't know if I'm ready. And the translation here, of course, could be a bit picky. We can go in a a bunch of different directions. But if I were to say one translation, I would say that I just got out of a relationship means I'm looking for something with no strings attached, where if I decide I want more, I'll get more. And if I don't, I won't. And this is the most, you know, scathing translation of the bunch. But I thought about this taking a step back and The real reason someone says this is to poke the bear and see how the bear reacts. And you are the bear here (laughs) to see what kind of leniency they can get with you to hopefully get a, oh, that's fine. Let's just see where this goes. No, no, no boundaries. It's chill to get the no boundaries he wants. It's a test because otherwise if a man with self-awareness and maturity truly doesn't know if he's ready, he wouldn't be wishy-washy. He would be in or he would be out. He would say this is worth trying or no, it's not. No dancing around. So I have found that it's less of a statement and it's more of a question to see how you react. It's more of a test. Do you react with, well, let's not waste our time then? Or do you react with, oh, that's okay. Let's just see what happens. The latter is the perfect scenario of what he might want, right? A situationship to say, you know, let's continue to hang out. I don't want a relationship, but let's continue to hang out. He wants to see your reaction. So I say, make your decision. Stop thinking from his point of view, What is your point of view? Do you want slow and ambiguous and see what happens? Or do you want intentional and honest from the beginning? That's the question you need to answer for yourself. So that's that one. And I would say simple translation for a related phrase, I'm not the relationship type, or I'm not looking for a relationship. That would also mean I'm not into you, but I want to see what I can get away with. End of story. Similar, right? It's an easy way to kind of let you down by making it about him, right? It's his commitment issues, but he leaves a crack in the door for you to say, oh, that's okay. So this is why it's a test. He doesn't hurt your feelings, but he's got you on the hook. We're not going to have a relationship, but we can still hook up. I want to keep my options open, but we can still hook up. So plain and simple, I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm not the relationship type. Believe him. And I'll do one last one here that I've found throws a lot of people, women in particular. It's when a guy asks a woman, why are you single? It's kind of a triggering phrase, right? How much do you weigh or how much money do you make? But I don't think we need to react to it with so much emotion. Why are you single translates to, let's talk about something we have in common. Make me feel good about myself for also being single. 
That is what I've found. Men ask this question as a grounding exercise. Let's get on the same page, right? There's nothing nefarious about it necessarily. Maybe he's a bit insecure about being single and he wants to level the playing field, right? It's not an attack on you. It's about him. And sure, there might be an element here of cynicism. You're hot. You're funny. You've got everything going for you. What's the catch? I think that's human nature. It's human nature to be a little bit cynical in you know, a superficial dating app world. But again, that's not about you. Neither of those translations are about you. They're both about him, how he's feeling, likely a little bit unsure of himself and insecure. So don't take it any further than it needs to go. Don't add any meaning that's not there. And that's it. I'll end it right there. I hope this arms you with empathy because empathy is about you. It's about your power. It's the clarity you need to make decisions for you by understanding them.